The uh, Harris campaign uh, certainly had a lot to say uh, about this in terms of the statement they released. Uh, and so I, I really thought uh, it was very strong. I'm going to pull up in a second. Uh, let me pull up Monique, Joy uh, and Robert. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to read this in a second. Uh, so uh, but I tell you what, I, Monique, their rapid response was really important because they framed it in terms of exactly how Donald Trump behaves, how he acts. They talked about how rude he was, how he is constantly disrespectful to journalists and black journalists. Uh, and so they have they were, were hitting him hard in, in their response back. Yeah, because he's an asshole. That's why. And, and he shouldn't have been allowed to be an asshole in our home where our sisters are supposed to be safe. And I know that they are grown women and that they agreed to do that particular assignment. And I'm not even saying, um, though I agree with you, Roland, that it should have been men and women. I don't think it should have been necessary for a man to have to step up to protect a black woman in this space from, from this crotchety, amoral, felon, old ass man. I mean, I, I don't think that that should have been necessary. I think that the organization should have been protective. And if they were going to do something like that, it shouldn't have happened in the format that it was in. And so now, you know, when with black women got to make a statement, White House got to make a statement, uh, Kamala HQ got to make a statement, Kareem got to make a statement. We got to talk about it for an hour. Unforced error. NABJ, unforced error about a known idiot. He did exactly what we said he was going to do. And I and and I see people, even even white people who mean to be allies, who were saying, look until the end. He made an idiot of, him, of himself. This is hilarious. Nothing about it is funny. To me, I would have been ready to fight. I'm glad I wasn't there because it for real, you want to you want to see the the other side of of this black woman? Call my sister out of her name. Interrupt when 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 one of my other sisters is trying to talk. Try to make delegitimate um, my my American born vice president the same way you did with the first black president. None of that is funny to me. Not one damn bit. And so even the people who are laughing, what I said on Twitter is maybe this is where our coming together can be of help. Because when when my race and sex is being disrespected, I do not find that humorous. We we as black women have been beaten up too much in these centuries in this country for you to laugh at that shit like it's some kind of joke. And and so no, I I I don't see a remedy here. I understand everything everybody is saying about ways it could have been done better, but I return back to my original comment: it should not have happened. I, I was made to feel unsafe in places where we're supposed to be safe, and that is not the way it's supposed to go. And forgive my language for all y'all who expect me to and, and, and Joy, to First of all, you, 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 I, I, look, look you, you, you ain't got to forget language. Joy, Joy the, the point there about, you know, we talk about safe spaces. This is what I have to keep reminding a bunch of these folks at NABJ this. <clears throat> the role of journalists is our job. Yet when we are here, we are members of an organization. What we do as members of an organization is different than what we do in our jobs. So, for instance, NABJ takes funds from different entities. Someone can say, well, you know, you know, as journalists, we should be doing that. No, we are an organization. I literally had to explain to our board members this. We released a statement. We were working on this statement. And they wanted to put the reaction from the company in a statement. I said, y'all, stop. This ain't no story. This is a statement. So the problem is sometimes we have folk in NABJ 
who are trying to act like all decisions you make, you're making as that of a journalist. Yet when I was on the board of NABJ, I was operating as an officer. In fact, so my voting can't be based upon how I personally benefit. It's how we gave a thumb down. We gave a thumbs down award <clears throat> to CNN, MSNBC, and all the networks for not hiring a single black show host. The board had to vote. So people came to me and they say, Roland, you shouldn't vote on this because you're one of the folks in line to get a show on CNN. And I said, and I, when I spoke to the board, I said, when I chose to run for the office, I chose to represent the interest of NABJ and its members. I cannot make a vote sitting on the, and in fact, we had one, we had one person, I saw, that, saw her earlier. She got mad at me. How dare you vote against your company? I told her ass, I said, but I'm sitting in this room. I ain't sitting here with CNN. I'm not sitting in here with TV One. I'm sitting here for NABJ. And I said, I have to vote how I believe in the best interest of our organization, not my personal interest. And that's the mistake I told a bunch of people that today, that when you, we control who we invited in, we controlled the conversation. He doesn't get to dictate to us by saying, well, I'm a public figure, you're a journalist. No, here we are members of NABJ. That is separate from what our daily jobs are. Facts. I think that is something that that's called integrity and understanding what your role is. Many of us are part of Greek letter organizations. And if you've ever brought in people, you know, there are family members of yours that you love. You would never invite in. Why? Because you have a different responsibility when you're in the org. NABJ should have been thinking about themselves as an organization who gave their platform to a clown to perform for his base. And that was not a good use of NABJ's time. But then once they decided to have him, they had him, let's move on. Once they had him on there, they should have been prepared to have him on there and should have been prepared to make him focus on the facts and the, and the public policy and the things that would help people make a decision about whether he's right for the country if they were having him on. But now let's go to Donald Trump because all is not lost. And I love that that's what the, the, the Harris campaign made clearer today. This is who he is. He has reminded us yet again who he is. He does not care about black people. We are but a means to an end to actually inspire crazy white people. That's who he's really trying to target. So we've got to make a choice. If you are a black person like our, our former guest on the show who's looking at him this is not someone who cares about you. He is making a fool of you. You are clearly lost. This is not someone who wants to see you do well. This is someone who is using you as a tool to try to gain votes from people who do not value or respect you. So Donald Trump has reminded us again, much like when he did his speech at the convention of who he is. So, you know, I, while I don't, I agree it's not funny, although I did laugh because I think that his his outburst and his acting and the fact that he has to be so performative is to try to inspire his base, which is very demoralized right now because they see Democrats being so energized. But, and it's a sign that their internal polling is telling them something else, that they need to be desperate. So in some respects, I laugh because I understand politics and I understand what this is about. But you're right, it was insulting and it was, um, it was offensive, and it's a reminder of how far we have to go. But when you have Donald Trump on, it's something you have to expect. There is no safe space with him. If you have him, you know what? You have to be prepared for it. And they were not today. Yeah. Uh, Robert, I want to read. Uh, this is the statement uh, the Harris for President campaign released. It says, statement on Donald Trump showing exactly who he is at NABJ. The hostility Donald Trump showed on stage today is the same hostility he has shown throughout his life, throughout his term in office, and throughout his campaign for president as he seeks to regain power and inflict his harmful Project 2025 agenda on the American people. 
Trump lobbed personal attacks and insults at black journalists the same way he did throughout his presidency. While he failed black families and left the entire country digging out of the ditch he left us in. Donald Trump has already proven he cannot unite America, so he attempts to divide us. Today's tirade is simply a taste of the chaos and division that has been a hallmark of Trump's MAGA rallies this entire campaign. It's also exactly what the American people will see from across the debate stage as Vice President Harris offers a vision of opportunity and freedom for all Americans. All Donald Trump needs to do is stop playing games and actually show up to the debate on September 10th. Thoughts? Uh, oh, what a difference two weeks can make in American politics. As they say, a, a, a day is a year in politics. And this time about two weeks ago, President Trump was riding high. Um, he was at the RNC convention. He had just survived an assassination attempt. He was leading in almost every poll. Um, you know, you had Amber Rose and Hulk Hogan, Kid Rock, uh, Dana White, all at the, the RNC convention. You know, he talked about expanding the base of the party. And the discussions with the Republican side of the aisle weren't about whether or not he would win. It would be It was about how they're going to have an electoral mandate to the point that they could actually institute Project 2025, that they would actually be able to take control of both the House and the Senate. Uh, and the Democrats were on defense as to what they were going to do to simply have some levers of control uh, for an eventual, if not inevitable, Trump takeover. Fast forward two weeks, President Biden drops out of the race, a couple hundred million dollars get raised, start having calls, including calls organized by you, Roland, with hundreds of thousands of people on uh, discussing how they support the, the Harris campaign. You're going to have these big events coming up where you have uh, the, the event in Atlanta, where you have uh, the rollout of the vice president, where you're going to have the Democratic National Convention, where there's no bright light at the end of the tunnel for Trump right now. And you're seeing the desperation happen as he's seeing uh, he's grasping defeat from the jaws of victory because of hubris, because he thought that he had this thing locked up so he could pick someone like a J.D. Vance because his billionaire buddies told him that's who you need to pick so he can keep talking talking about these crazy ass tirades about sharks and getting electrocuted by batteries and Hannibal Lecter and those sorts of things. But now that there's actual competition up against him, he sees that he is losing in all these states and there are no new Trump voters. That is the problem that he runs into. There is no magic lever of support that he can pull into. He has all the poor white people in the country locked up already. They are not swing voters. They're on his side. But you now you can't go to Latinos. You can't go to, uh, to women, of course. And now you're you're coming to the black community after four years in office, four years running for president again, and now you're on the campaign trail trying to find a way to ease your way in, and you watched uh, enough to say, well, maybe a couple of them will take me in, and you're realizing that that door is closed also. And the question then becomes from the Trump campaign, where do you pick up more momentum? Where do you pick up new voters? And I don't think there's anywhere. And what you saw from Trump today was a realization that he really may lose this race, that there are no more doors open that he can pick. That's right. Well, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now when, you know, uh, when the vice president said yesterday in Atlanta, say it to my face, um, black folk, we saw what this fool said uh, to our faces. Uh, and again, I don't need to invite crazy into my house for them to leave and go, damn, they crazy. You knew that from the outset. And so that's what you saw. That's what you witnessed. Curl Prep Natural Hair Solutions at curlprep.com. I'm in shock. For curls, locks, braids, twists, and even those wigs and extensions. Women, men, and children are loving this line. Look at this video and you be the judge. People line up to see this product in action at hair shows. And when they take a seat and try it, they don't believe it's their hair. Buy the products at curlprep.com. It works on all hair types. Use code ROLAND, that's R-O-L-A-N-D, lowercase letters, to get a 15% discount. Parents, remove the ouch. You will love this system because you can comb the product through your child's hair with your fingers. It's all at curlprep.com. Use code ROLAND, lowercase letters, to get a 15% discount.